Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a radical equation, a very radical equation with complex numbers. I call it very radical because this goes to infinity. We have an infinite radical, we have a z and they're being added and we get i at the end, which is the imaginary unit. I'll be presenting two methods and they're very similar but I think there are slightly different approaches. And if you know of a third method, please let us know in the comment section down below. Let's start with the first method. First of all, I have this interesting equation. If I didn't have this part, it would be nice because then I could square both sides and notice that this expression includes itself infinitely many times, so on and so forth. So hopefully I could just take care of this nested radical real quick, right? But that additional z kind of messes things up a little bit, doesn't it? But don't worry, we're going to fix it. Let's go ahead and see how we can do that by setting a variable. Let's go ahead and use substitution and set this radical to w. So I'm basically saying that, okay, the square root of z plus the square root of z plus dot 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 all the way to infinity is equal to w. If I can find W, hopefully I can find Z from there, right? That's the goal. But we also have a Z here. So that implies two things. First of all, we said that, okay, this expression includes itself many times. And I set it equal to W. So we didn't have a radical only, but now we kind of isolated it. And notice that this is the same thing as W, right? Because this expression contains itself. So from here, we get the following. Square root of Z plus W equals w and then if you square both sides you're going to get what z plus w equals w squared awesome that's one equation that we're going to use how are we going to use it we don't know yet let's go ahead and look at the other equation what's the other equation well it just comes up naturally from the substitution notice that in the original equation this is z and i call that w so we now have z plus w equals i great Let's go ahead and write that down as well. Z plus W equals I. Now, do you see what I see? Hopefully you do. Because look, come on, isn't that obvious? These two things are the same. So if two things are equal to the same thing, then they're equal. In other words, this implies, I don't think I need those brackets. This implies that W squared equals I. Obviously, we could get this in so many different ways, but this is probably the quickest. And now, what can I do with this? Well, I can try to solve for W. And then, once I get W, I can hopefully plug it in somewhere to find Z. Because remember, W is a kind of like a dummy variable. I, I don't want to call it dummy variable, but it's just a variable. But that's not the end goal. The end goal is to solve for Z all the time, right? Z is the goal. Cool. So... What can I do? What does this mean? W squared equals I. It just means that I'm looking for square roots of I, right? And remember, a complex number has two square roots. If you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos on basics of complex numbers. Great. Now, let's go ahead and find the square root. There's a couple different ways to find the square root. For example, you can set W equal to A plus B I which is the name of this channel, by the way, right? And then from there, you can solve for A and B. Let's do that. From here, we get A squared minus B squared. B I squared is basically B minus B squared plus 2ABI equals I. Now, we're going to compare the real parts. And there's no real part here, so that's zero. Nice. And the imaginary parts, this is supposed to be one because we have one I here. You see that? Cool, now we get the following, a squared equals b squared, and 2ab equals 1, which implies ab equals 1 half. This implies b equals a, actually it implies two things, and remember, a and b are real, you have to take uh, be careful about that. b equals a or b equals negative a. There are two numbers whose squares are equal, right? So if you replace b with a, you get a squared equals 1 half, and that has two conclusions, kind of like a flowchart, right? Branches off and off. And it could be square root of one half or its opposite. 
But if you replace b with negative a, you get negative i squared equals one half, which means a squared is negative one half, but that's not possible because a and b are real. So we're not gonna be able to have that, and a can be complex, because that's the very clear definition of a complex number, and b has to be real, okay? Cool, so those are the two values that I'm getting, and since a and b are equal, or they're opposites, then we get the following. If a is equal to this, and by the way, let's go ahead and write down the square root of one half as one over square root of two, and maybe even write it as root two over two. So if a is equal to that, then b could be the same. Or if a is equal to that, I mean the opposite, then b can be the same. But wait a minute, we didn't we say b equals negative a is an option? But that didn't give us solutions because uh, a has to be real. Make sense? So I, I think my conclusion in this case would be, yes, a and b have to be equal. In other words, the square roots of i are root 2 over 2 plus root 2 over 2i, and you can call it w1 if you want. And the other one is just going to be negative root 2 over 2 minus root 2 over 2i. By the way, let me give you a quick clue. If you find one of the square roots, the other one is just going to be the opposite. So you don't have to look for the other one because their squares have to be equal, right? Make sense? Even in the complex world. So those are the values of a and b. And now that's not the end of it because we just found w, right? And what is the relationship between w and z? Easy. You can use the first one, but I like the second one better, which is this one. z plus w is equal to i. So now since I know w, z is just going to be i minus w. But there are two values for w. These are w values. I guess you can call them w1 and w2. And so we're going to plug it in. And to find the z values, one of them is going to be uh, subtracted from i like this. Right? And let's go ahead and finalize this. This is going to be i minus root 2 over 2 minus root 2 over 2i. This is kind of 1i, 1 minus root 2 over 2. That's going to give us 2 minus root 2. So it's going to be negative root 2 over 2 plus 1 minus, or not 1 minus, 2 minus root 2 over 2 multiplied by i. And this is one of the solutions for z, right? And the other solution is just going to be the opposite? No. It's just going to be i minus the opposite of that. So it's going to be all plus. Make sense? And from here, we should be getting something like negative root 2 over 2, I mean positive root 2 over 2, plus 2 plus root 2 over 2i. If you want, you can also express these with the plus minus signs, but that's not super important. But those are going to be the two solutions. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method, and that's going to be quicker. So we have z plus the square root of z plus the square root of z, so on and so forth. And this is equal to i, right? So let's go ahead and do this. I want to square root both sides. Why can't we do that, right? I mean, why not? Once you do that, you're going to get the radical. But then rewrite our expression. What's the original one? This was the original expression, remember? And this was equal to i. Now we just found out that this is equal to square root of i. So z is going to be i minus square root of i. And from here, by finding the square roots of i, you're going to find the same solutions as before. And obviously, it's going to be much quicker. If you know of a, another method, please let us know. But this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.